Good. Okay, so this is part three, and I didn't read the end of that verse that it, uh, it says that I command you that it will go well with you and with your children after you and will prolong your days on this earth, which Yahweh has given you forever. Don't forget that. Which he has given you forever. Do you believe that Yahweh is all-seeing and all-knowing? If you do, then that means that you should still follow his commandments and statutes. At least try. You know, I mean, there's a lot of statutes. It's hard. I'm not wearing all the same material of clothes, you know. I try my best. But I, I, that's, that's, for me, that one, I just, I can't do it. <laughs> like, I can't do it. If you believe he's all seeing and all knowing, then don't insult him and assume that he didn't realize he was going to change the rules later. That he was just stupid. If you really believe in him. Just, the Old Testament has a lot of value. Okay, and go back and read what Yahshua actually said. Not what Paul said that Yahshua said. But what Yahshua actually said. And then compare, like, Matthew and Mark and John's accounts of what Yeshua said, because they were all there, and they all have different interpretations and words in red. And sometimes you'll see slight differences, slight differences. And then you can try to, you know, put that together. Luke, student of Paul. So, I kind of am like, Pleh. Anyway, cities of refuge. Moses severed three cities on the side of Jordan. Uh that the slayer might with go away, which would kill his neighbor unawares, and hate in him, not in times, and fleeing unto these cities he might leave. So he fleed, he, they killed some more people. Yeah, they did. But they killed people who would slay them in the night. You know, people that would come up and sneak up on them and murder them in the middle of the night when they were just passing through. Those are the people they slaughtered. Okay, and this is the law that Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies, the statutes, and judgments which Moses spoke unto the children of Israel after Egypt on this side of the Jordan in the valley um, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and all these different tribes or whatever. They possessed his land, the king, Og, Guy, all these different tribes. Okay, and then it reviews the Ten Commandments. And Moses called Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, hear the statutes and judgments that I speak in your ears this day, that you will learn them and keep and do them. Yahweh made a covenant with us. Yahweh made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us who are alive today. Yahweh talked with you face to face in the mountain in the midst of the fire. I stood between him and you at the time. I show you the word. You were afraid by reason of fire and wouldn't go up, saying, I am Yahweh, he said. So he signed it, those commandments, okay? You shall have no other gods before me. He didn't say there are no other gods. This is mono, you know, he said don't have them before me. Don't stack, craze, grave out these images. And I know you guys think that your image is of Jesus on the cross, but his name wasn't Jesus. He wasn't born December 25th, and he wasn't even crucified on a cross. It was a stake. It wasn't a cross. That cross symbolizes Tammuz, who was born on December 25th, who was part of a trinity. You have been deceived into worshiping an idol. But if you would just throw away all your idols, no matter who you think they are, and just pray, then he'll guide you, as he just said. Just throw away all the crap, you know, the fish emblems and the crosses. and Just get rid of all that, because that is misleading you. And he doesn't like that. It's just, that's what it says. I'm um, whatever. And I'm, that's my interpretation. You don't bow to them. You don't serve them. For I'm jealous. And it says he'll visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And I don't think that's really like him magically doing it. I think that's just genetics. People, you do bad things. It's going to affect your health. If you don't follow the laws, it's going to affect your health, and it gets passed on to your children. That's it. That's just how it is. I'm sorry if it hurts your magical little feelings. Okay? And, but he shows mercy unto thousands of him that loves him and keeps his commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh in vain, for he will not hold them guiltless that take his name in vain. And I wish they would go into more detail on this. But in vain does not... We, what, when you do something in vain... 
you're doing something without real purpose. You're doing something for no reason and you're sacrificing, you're making a sacrifice for it and it's sad. So call him by the real name, for goodness sake, call him by the real name. If you think you're praying to the Most High and he gave his name, but you're calling him God when there's a ton of gods, which he clarified in the first commandment already, to have no gods before me, then you're breaking two commandments right there. And most of you are breaking the, first, the second one too with the images and praying to the cross. That's the first three commandments you're breaking. And then the fourth commandment. These are the four that everyone forgets. And I'm going to skip the final six, okay, and be done. These are the four people don't follow. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as Yahweh has commanded you. Six days you will labor and do work. So actually, it does say you're supposed to work on Sunday. Sorry! But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. In it you shall do no work. But it's not just you. It says Christians who go out to eat after your fake Sabbath and make people serve you and tip them badly. And I can say that because I was a waitress for many years. Listen to this, even if you think it's Sunday. Listen. Nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maid, nor your ox or your ass or your cattle or any stranger that is in your gates, in your city. That your manservant and your maidservant, like waitresses, who have to serve you, okay, after your pagan circus festival every Sunday, may rest as well, which is fine if they serve you after church on Sunday. But if you think that Sunday is the Sabbath, then shouldn't you at least treat it like the Sabbath and not make people work and then tip them poorly? Hello? Ugh. And remember that you are a servant in the land of Egypt. You are. And, and that what he brought you out with a mighty hand, therefore he commands you to keep the Sabbath. Remember, remember the whole thing with Egypt started when they just wanted a day off. You know? They just wanted a day off and he doubled their um, order. He made them make twice as much when Moses came to them. And they just wanted to go into the desert on Sabbath to have a service. And he wouldn't even let them do that. And then it ended up where they had, where they eventually left. Because he wouldn't even let them do that. So just, you know, just try following these first four commandments for a little while. And see what happens. Because according to what I just read you, you're supposed to be blessed. You're supposed to live longer. Yahweh is going to actually, if you just, like, pray and get rid of all the extra devotionals and props. They're just props. They distract you, get rid of all that. Uh, then, then I believe that's when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Because Yahshua said, the one unforgivable sin is denying the Holy Spirit. But what does that mean? The Holy Spirit guides us. It tells us what we should do. When we blatantly ignore Yahweh's word forever, perpetual covenant, do you think the Holy Spirit's going to come to us and tell us what to do? And if the Holy Spirit does, by some divine mercy, because it, he forgives us for our own ignorance, if it does come to you and you still ignore it, do you think it's going to keep coming to you? You're going to be stepping out of that light. You're going to be stepping into the darkness. You're not going to have any protection. Your enemies are going to be able to smite you. I'm telling you, when I started following the commandments, and I always knew about all this since I was a kid. I knew about all this, and I ignored it. My life was hell, you know. And I just made a, my own pact. And, you know, it's, I guess, the Christian version of getting saved. But that's, I just think that's a bunch of nonsense. I made my own pact with Yahweh. Then I'm going to try to follow his commandments and as many statutes as I can. And, I, and the Holy Spirit came to me and said, you know, I'll protect you. I'll give you a child will help you get out of debt. I mean, it, and, and all of that is happening. Before I knew it, the army called my husband. Now I'm pregnant. I mean, it's amazing. Now I've lost some friends and family in the process. But part of the thing that I skipped in Deuteronomy, it says do not meddle with them. It's, and also in Revelation, it says let them be. Like, so I'm here. If you're looking for this video, you're finding it. You seek and you shall find. But people that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, Buy your food, buy your water, don't meddle with them, let them be.
Because if they hear the truth and they deny the truth, it's way worse for them in the long run. Have a really blessed day. Please tune in tonight for EC Talk Show Live at 7 p.m. i got a lot of work to do. I've been putting off. But I don't have as many videos to upload. So, But I am going to talk about one abomination that's purely against Leviticus, which is animal-human hybrids that scientists are doing. I'm going to talk about the controversy with the Queen and the Pope and the giant child trafficking cover-up. I found an organization called the ITCCS, and they function. Uh, it's the International Tribunal into Crimes of Church and State, and they really try to expose these cover-ups. Well, they've charged the queen, and the person who served her got arrested. But apparently there's an, a whole child trafficking conspiracy going on. So I'm going to talk about that, and I'm also going to talk about Edward Snowden and his interview that you didn't see on the media, but luckily I got to watch, and it's on Live Leak, at least as of now. And he just let out a bombshell of information. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's so much worse than you think. Anyway, have a great night. I hope you tune in. And please don't forget to go to Tube Start and check out my campaign if you want to, like, share it or like it or maybe do $2. It'll help me get a new computer so I can do a better talk show where people can call in um, and I can have a better production value. I can keep recording my music of 432 hertz, which is anti-Nazi 440 hertz and pro-healing energy hertz. <clears throat> And I can uh, keep doing videos like this, too, of course, because I have to do this. Okay.